Moshi Moshi my gamers and welcome back to Honkai Style Whale. You originally thought you would just be meeting with the Express crew, but the group has just now zoomed in masses. Gallagher, Macha, Misha, Firefly, Robin, Sunday, and it seems that the person who led to the creation of this lightly scene was precisely the seemingly indifferent Gallagher himself. If this isn't just because he's lonely and wants to spend some time with everyone, then he must be secretly formerly some kind of shockingly conspiracy. Fortunately, he doesn't seem to bear you any ill will. Perhaps you will be able to grasp the full picture of your surrounding situation peacefully. Today we're gonna get explanation from Gallagher. Before anything, I'm gonna pull a foy hee <laughs> Robin. That is not golden. That is not golden. No. Nope. Not even it. Nope. Come out, you slut! Oh, never mind, she's coming. Let's do it slowly, let's do it slowly for content. Hey, Pom Pom, what did I get? Oh boy, she just got pushed out of the way. Actually, 60 pulls. That's a surprise. That's the lowest pin I ever got for that. As for March, look who finally <laughs> look who finally got the Elios. Oh, oh, wow, nice boob angle. Thank you. Out of all things, I have to call you that. The food can heal. You funny girl. I would use her, but I'm gonna grind off that just be easier. Okay, let's continue. Let's hear them speak for a second. Sunday. There's no need for words. You're safe, and that's all that matters. That's it? Uh, if they'll hug, I'm like, no, but we shouldn't hug this guy. He literally changed you. Actually, we don't know that. Why did I say that? I heal chest. And it's right here. Let's talk to Bisha. Oh, the atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people in here. Um, yeah. And my wife. <laughs> you back for me. I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. Can you hold my hand while we're doing this? Speak, boy. I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That okay. sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh? Is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation as Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? So what, everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. Much too good. I just wish he's just making her eyes like that. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family the Watchmaker and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? Hmm. Um, okay, let's see. Now, I won't say the bottom part. I'm gonna say number two. Someone's is manipulating the stellar one. How keen. 
Well, what should I say? I expected nothing less from the person here who is the most familiar with the Stellarons. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Azdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacony from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacony under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then... How did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacony, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata, and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use, Dormancy. That's its real name. We really? exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So, this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penacony to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Wait, you mean Sunday? We're gonna talk to- Oh, wait. Oh, that's- Okay, and Sunday, you done talking to your sister? Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. As I suspected, 
interesting. It's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the sweet dream. That's what turned Penacony into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you. She's still alive. Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive. And even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans and were adopted by the family when they came to help. I saw that vision. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. Or the paradise in our dreams. Indeed, for the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Penacony's promising future. Is he okay? His eyes always like that? I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. Mm, you got me, the main character! We've always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah! We Nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Mr. Trailblazer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ain't nothing to fear no more, we win. Uh, that line actually makes me a bit nervous. What do you mean, March? Don't give me that look. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start. And time is against us. We must hasten. Hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. What's my wife? She walked away! No! Okay, Ying, let's talk. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh huh? Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Penacony, and he has the entire power of the harmony behind him, not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No. That won't do. Of course, yeah. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling that too. I can't quite put my finger on it. I feel that I too. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Yeah, yeah, here you go. Uh, I knew it. Hmm. Mm, what do you need it for? As I suspected, this chip Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. A Venturine? Is he still alive? I believe and so. What does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by 
going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. The only question mark in all of this is Aventurine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Oh, wait. Spoken like a true hero, even if the Dream Master is innocent. The family <gasps> see corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Lakework, if I'm not mistaken. We've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express. And I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. <laughs> Oh, you're making me blush with these flashers. Keep them coming. Uh, I don't know much about my life story, but I do have extraordinary skills. <laughs> you're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last nameless, he embarked disembarked, and embarked again. Traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future Nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. Okay. Right there. Hold on a second. Let me get that bud real quick and then I'll come to you next. Now, buddy, three, three, you can off. Chip, you know that good this queen's friend? She just stay ahead, left me the moment, and with me the next. Scary, Chip. She's probably sad. It's not good to keep negative thoughts in. You won't be able to fly. He was so hard to understand. I would be great if everyone is so happy every day, Chip. Goodbye. I'm going to the great tree. I wish you and the great happiness too, Chip, Chip. Granny, the one next to me? Uh, <laughs> you're just staring at that bird for a while now. Okay, we'll feel time. <sighs> Back here again. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. I've kept my promise. Brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. <gasps> Is Firefly a part of this too? I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train. But I remember your last words. Yeah. Don't let us down, old man. What are you doing? What's going on? Uh, what's happening? The ground. Oh, oh, it's going up. Okay. The bubble is some boss part already. Like what already? <sighs> I should be holding Firefly's hand. I don't want to fall over. You go, girl. I hope you are. Is that where we're going? Go ahead. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. The oh. first and last nameless of Penacony, Mikhail Char Legworth, the watchmaker. Oh, the first one. Interesting. <gasps> Staircase. Oh, interesting. Okay. Why something like that? Rolling it around. Extra cadets, joy. 
that's how I'll make money for extra living. Is there a chest right here? It sounds like it. Or are those all those just background noises? Did I saw a bird? No, I did not. Hmm, checking around here. Oh yeah, there was a chest. I was like, give! Thank you. Damn. Just felt like a boss for arena. I'm feeling this probably a boss for arena. I could be mistaken though. There you got this. And thank you. For extra money. Space maker. Oh what? Who's sitting there? Is he dead? Oh look I'm sitting down like that. With the sea so of Mo's memory zone, in the garden close to the fullest moon to the water, an elder man was under his wrinkling, enveloped in utter silence. The watchmaker, Makal Char Legwork, has passed into an endless timeless stream where no sound could have ever awaken him. Sure enough, the watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that one. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble. There's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Well, let's have a look. As the world closes, here you nods even so slightly in your direction. You take a deep breath, steady your mind, and turn your gaze towards the watchmaker. Touch dream bell in Makar's hand. Oh, what is that feeling? You press your hands against the dream ball in the thick vegetable's music curls under string, then stretch outwards from your fingertips. As if waving a digital web, it gently creates your palm. A chill chill from your fingertips, carrying with it a mirage of vegetal and interwined memories, as experience would suggest. But this time, you see nothing at all. Hmm. Take a deep breath and try to read the dream rolls again. The dream roll is clearly environment. Perhaps the approach was wrong. You think holding your breath and closing your eyes. With one knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin, firm culture in memorial. Yet before you, there means a abyss of darkness. No crimson sun descending upon snow crib mountains. No gentle laughter. No tickling stars. No echoes or swords clashing. And most of all, no trace of trailblaze. There's nothing and nothing is there. It could be there is but an empty dream bubble. Wait. What's going on? Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside this dream bubble? But Bud's chirping. Hmm. How could a dream bubble be empty? <laughs> Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. <gasps> uh, but I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. It's for Mikhail, and for the future of Penacony. Okay. Guess we're going. Sh <gasps> Boot heel time! Test his hours until Korea Welcome Festival. Welcome to the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? Oh my god, I'm being boot heel! Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express, and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought- Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. 
I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? I'm... Pom Pom. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Paw Paw could never grow big. He's always tiny. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the express. So he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, Lloyd. I see. Another one of the nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. What do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number. We'll go check on them ourselves. I'll be able to do that, dude. I'm afraid that's not possible. Yeah, I, I thought so. I both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... Well... I don't think so. I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding forced awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution, then? Are you saying we sleep here? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companion. It seems so. Oh, fudge. Look. Say fuck! Nothing personal. But if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can. Okay? Oh, uh, shit. Please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. I do too. I tried to contact them on the express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. <sighs> Just don't keep me waiting forever. Okay, I'm being time for this. Don Hung seems pretty worried about his companions. <gasps> oh, give him some he's space. not even playable yet. Stressing out about it won't help anything. Mm, yeah, he's not playable yet. Oh my god, he even has robotic nipples. You guys see that? If I attack, <gasps> a gun. Interesting. Hands up, motherfucker. Give me your money. Okay, let's start with. This one, the princess? Okay. The Charmony Festival is about to start! I'm so excited! Hey! You guys here for the Charmony Festival too? Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about. But I heard it's a lot of fun! Well, back in my home world, Anaria, we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Oh, come on. The Charmony Festival is a once in an Amber Era event. How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never oh. know, right? Maybe on her world, birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the, uh, unsettling? Things happening in the dreamscape. Unsettling things? What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival! I've been looking forward to it! Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. Fucking! They're clueless. Say fucking! No, make this game PG-13, and then we're like, you have a cuss now! Yay! What up, motherfuckers? Yeehaw! Oh, I talk to you next. Greetings! I'm 
Cody of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Hello. So, uh, there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation, and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um, what do you mean? Wait, you haven't heard? I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a we got nothing to hear. Uh, she doesn't appear to be acting. So it seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. I will not ask either. Back already? Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder. Sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guests seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape. And wherever we go, all we see is people enjoying themselves. Definitely not a good sign. Yeah, they don't know. I agree. Another unusual thing is that the Oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. However, I walked around the hotel but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Oak family is that Sunday guy, right? Yeah. We shouldn't linger here too long. Let's go back to the express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC? Bro? If you run away now, everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See? The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality... A secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill... If you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. Hmm. How do we get into the VIP lounge? This is where my street smarts come into play. Oh, he's a gangster, hmm? Like Gecko. Like that, I like that. Alright, excuse me, let me in, bitch! You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I assist you? We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Now, we've been waiting here forever without any food or water. I'm starving! Oh, man, is this how the fam treats its guests? Say what the fuck! <laughs> Say what the fuck, man! <laughs> this guy can't even cuss! Is this your idea of street smarts? 
starting an altercation? It's called standing up for your rights. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you wait. <laughs> See? Just like that. Just... Uh, just... Don't call yourself nameless next time. Then what it does this wants to are something else. <gasps> Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Hey, one well, side, that's nice. Okay, where is is Black Swan gonna be coming here too? Hey! Good evening, gentlemen. Hello. Hey, I have an order for a bottle of his Donna's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Has Donna's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. Uh, I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? Then what should we do now? No. Oh. No need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and he hasn't come yet. Now, let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh. Well, give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat. No eyes. Well, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. <laughs> it's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. Hmm, just one minute. Okay. Ah, this flavor. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Ooh, really hits the spot. How can you drink that being a robot? Cherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Uh, is that really something that humans enjoy? <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Yeah, thanks. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions. Let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about. Regarding Acheron, as you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. <laughs> Who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the rainbow set lets their lux arrow do all the beaten? Talking. Do all the talking. Well, you know what I mean. Even though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. No nope. contrary. She's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. And you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> I'm not entirely sure. But I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a Galaxy Ranger, or perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason. 
that I can't figure out. Anyway, what worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual, unless the invitations weren't sent by them. Uh, if that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, despite the chaos. Maybe it's she pay the harmony pulling the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. But eons don't. They stick to their determined path and never turn back. Even if they reach a dead end. You think Shipei's will is behind all this? It may not necessarily be Shipei. There's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh, so you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because their absolutely right leader is gone? Exactly. I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities even with limited insight and judgment. I don't know what you've been through, but I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices, because no one else can do it for them. That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter and figure out her true intentions. Hmm, yeah. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the Memo Keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Pretty much. Going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests? What's your plan? It's simple. We just grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips with the family. Or maybe we can even take their identities. What? No need for that. We'll return to the Express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. What? Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? Huh? As Donna's White Oak? Wait, did you just say? But didn't you just say? Exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of Asdana's White Oak just a moment ago. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. <sighs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. <laughs> well, fork me. It says Donna's fuck White me. Oak, all right. And there's a <laughs> note. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. No mistake, that's her message to you. She knew the hotel wasn't safe, so she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but now it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Oh boy, she's like... Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill, so I told them to wait in the parlor car. Oh, just in time. Two guests? Two? Yeah, or two. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. 
I assumed you were already acquainted with the garden. Given the chaotic situation in Panacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. You are the memo keeper. Yes. Pleased to meet you, Dan Hung. I've seen you in others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's White Oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, you memo keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Black Swan. <gasps> I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. Oh my god. As for Acheron's story... You bought your girlfriend with you? Ooh. I'm sure she knows it better than I do. She's like, thank you, babe. I'll explain. Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You garden of recollection shirtbag. You betrayed me. No? I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. To be honest, it was more like stalking than helping oh and the process was far from unnoticed but we did escape why oh. the face you just think horny with her i asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals namely all of you trustworthy <laughs> Son of a nice lady. You think I'm dumb or something? How about this? I'll put oh! holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Then it doesn't have Trust. to be like that. I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. <sighs> this passenger is requesting... As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Hung. Please rest assured, your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Relics? Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens. A sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods, shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So, how long has this rain been going on for? I used to believe, just like you, that it would eventually stop years and decades oh her hands which are so creepy and in the end such hope faded away before the rain did looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all as he spoke the old man gaze remains fixed on the distant Amiss from i mean the fine disney of black swing Countless shadowy hands emerge from the sea, surrounded in the eternal mist, reaching out towards the sky one by one. Well, let me share a story with the mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, 
Their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Like those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the path strutters, they emerge from the depths of Ix, seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms they were once my dear companions, a group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. I'm so invested in storyline, not gonna lie. The universe. Saving my devil gets the impact. The universe witnessed the fall of Zulo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. A price so hefty that only those who were there still remember. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of nihility. As for me, I've suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? Well, some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. <sighs> I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if... And it's just an if. If this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question. And a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day, I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, Someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. Hmm. Now back to one POV. Oh boy. That's an answer to the first piece. Oh shit. When I appeared as a child, my speech, mindset, and soul reflected immaturity and innocence. As I grew into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shipe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade, promoting the path of the harmony to the best of my ability. However, I made a mistake yesterday. While I was preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor out of uh, laziness. I lied and claimed that everything was ready. <laughs> Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worried that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. So, I confess to you now 
to seek atonement for my sins. Do you sincerely repent and vow to change your ways? <sighs> yes. Have you examined your soul and confessed all your sins? Oh. Yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family, and you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Oh, praise she may. And thank you, esteemed advocate. Next, please step forward. I, I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Rest assured. I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, absolution will be granted. Oh, oh, great. You know, I... I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to get a ticket. My house, my land, and... my two children. What? Let's see. Please, go on. Well, my children were starving, and I hoped they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If nah, I wouldn't do that. I can strike it rich here. I'll lift them out of that situation and give them the life they deserve. But the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. All my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll work my hardest to redeem my children and make them part of the family. Praise, praise the harmony. Next, please step forward. Hey, long time no see, Mr. Sunday. The most esteemed individual in Penacony, and the next leader of the Oak family, right? I have sought their presence with us. Let us proceed. Sure. Let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned. Please forgive me. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast and a bottle of Soul Glad. What? That's it. Nothing more. Can we wrap this up? I've got a robo-ball game to catch, you know? This is boring. Do you seek to atone for your sins through good deeds? My sins? Well, I'm starting to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge me. You think nobody knows what your precious family has done? About the watchmaker? Huh? Kid yourself, feather brain. Those dream chasers might be fooled by your act, but don't fool yourself. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? And your power? What makes you think you can sit there all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Well... I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's Paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Good luck with your election, and, uh, don't make me regret my investments in you. Damn. Oh, revered triple-faced soul. Hear my doubts. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak? When they will pay any price to survive, who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? If the strong defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise, then who, who is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world? Brother? Brother? Brother... Are you all right? I'm... fine. I've been working long hours, and I just Is made the trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. 
So, I'm a bit out of sorts. But it'll all be over before we know it. You've been working non-stop on the Germany Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> no need to worry about troubling anyone. The Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. But now that we know the truth, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand, even if the negotiation does not go smoothly. I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chordmaster, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive, and the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. You know, since arriving in Penacone, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. The Dream Master rarely grants an audience, even for us. But, given the urgency of the situation, he's agreed to meet us in person. <laughs> Perhaps he'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. Indeed. Let us hope so. It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. I apologize for any inconvenience caused by the urgency. Don't worry. I'll be waiting here. Okay. It's Mr. Sunday! Hey! Come over here! <laughs> well, Looks busy! Looks like someone needs help. Let's go check it out. Knock them out. Hey I guess we are. I can't see his heels. I need to focus. Oh, Mr. Sunday. Hey there. Okay. See the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my soul glad bottle. Wait, are you the kid from the past? If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? <laughs> the, the moon? You mean the grand theater? <laughs> Yeah. Look at me. Nah, he's drunk. What the hell? For too long. I must be missing that moon. <laughs> he, he, how is that allowed to drink? But it's no big deal. The grand theater here looks much better than the moon back home. It's just magnificent. They told me not to sell everything I had just to come to Penacone. <laughs> How short-sighted. Selling everything you had? Why would you go to such lengths? Why? Can't you see? Life back home is miserable. It's not really living at all. It's better to be here at Pinnacone. No pain, no worries about tomorrow, just sweet dreams. You can do whatever you want. That's what I call living. <laughs> My god. Now this is the life. Is this truly living? <laughs> huh? What did you say, young lady? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idine Park over there so you can continue enjoying your sweet dream? Oh. Yeah, that's a great idea. Wow. No wonder you are the leader of this sweet dream. You're totally a lifesaver. See you around, Mr. Sunday. And uh, it, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> um, holy Chad, he's drunk. What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? The man we ran into... He doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only way to survive, even if it means giving up on reality. That's not really living at all. Hmm. I suppose you have a point. But, in my opinion, that's how most people live their lives. 
Why do you say that? He say, he say the truth, though. You think that man is not actually living, but that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power, and those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, value doesn't come out of thin air, and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, people have to take from others. So, the weak get exploited and oppressed. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. But oh, okay, yeah, it makes sense. Ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it. Because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value. And even the weak believe in it. Survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream in Penacone to escape from that reality and find solace. No tragedies exist here. Only happiness. Although in its nascent form. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? <sighs> Perhaps that man is just an exception. Let's not jump to conclusions. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Reef. Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. Aww. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. This is like family time. Damn, that's wholesome. This is family time with Robin. I'm just walking down the street. Da la 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 la. Ah! Motherfucker, I'm gonna kill you! I wonder what the mole has a job, but I guess it didn't work. So let's talk to cheerful guest. Glad to meet you again, Robin. How are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. Uh, it's going smoothly. They don't know. Uh uh, they don't know. To join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? <sighs> nah, not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Nah, we all like to say that, but uh, oh, it's boring now. Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious without gaining weight and <laughs> or sick as long as you can afford a room this place is the ultimate paradise but um you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality right that's exactly why i don't plan on bringing anything back just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me I mean, I'm not one of those long living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime, and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? It's like those saying they don't want evil in the world. You need evil to make a balance. <laughs> I see. Genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin. I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. Hmm, I like this. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. She had a valid point. And I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is, she thinks she's in control of her life. But in reality... She's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. That's what it looks like. Once she steps out of this sanctuary, everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't she? However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. No, and the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. Hmm, very strange. Okay, let's keep strolling to the next city. Any trucks? Nope. So, next person. Oh, right. Let's talk to. Did I saw. Nope, never mind. A quiet guest seems interesting. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking, isn't it? 
He's like, what? Oh, Robin. Hey! I can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. Are you looking up or are you looking down with boobs? Look up. You're right. Thank you. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. No. With little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations. Especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said, with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Pentagoni? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and my hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. How heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. And they have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support services in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. A true appearance. No. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So... You'll be living forever in this dreamscape, right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. You know, whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well, I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart, and my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise. And I'll treasure every moment I spend here. <laughs> How I envy those everlasting things. Look how you said that. That old man's story. It's so tragic. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However, even this sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain and reality. There will be a way out. Panacone is already on the right track. Hey, he's smiling. It's kind of awkward. Meet the all the wa- Wait a minute. Why is the two Robins? That is- <gasps> Oh, is there Sparkle? Sparkle! Look what we have here. A lovely young lady. Sparkle! Get out! Is that me? Spuggle! Get out of that beautiful body! That's Robin. Mm, don't even do this. What a surprise to see you again. Show yourself. Your trick won't work on us. I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation too. That must be you, right? Okay, they know. Good, good. Did you enjoy yourself? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. The music of the Harmony doesn't tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. No, you haven't. You should be thanking me. Because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Penacone would still be in shambles. Don't you think? That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family. And it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think 
you can scare me. You think I've no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, chicken wing boy. But I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this truly the paradise you desire? Stop it. <laughs> What's the rush, chicken wing boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Mast Fool. Leave now, or the family won't tolerate you anymore. All right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? <sighs> I also depends, you know. I also depends who you are. Well, That's it. I've done my part, and now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here, nah, suspicious. For both of you, and don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show, and it'll be thrilling. Bang! Nah, she's doing. I heard a raven calling in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Greet the Dream Master. Okay. Let's do this next and then I'll stop him there. So, the Dream Master. We can finally see him. Okay. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams. It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality, or bring you happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. That might be true, but... Even without Penacone, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he is receiving hospice care in a comatose state, and his fate is sealed. Is Panacone granting these people a future, or is it taking it away from them? Probably both. Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. That's true. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah, we took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers. And later, when I decided to leave Penacone, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. Hmm. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky. Even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? What are you thinking, dude? Are you implying that the same goes for humans too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. Hey! The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, 
Only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. That's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just... sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. While this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. Exactly. The of harmony have always taught us. While the harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong. This is like an argument I'm listening strong. right now. And the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream. Human nature contains greatness. But it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the Harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? <sighs> People often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Hmm. Are you reading, sister? What are you reading? Mr. Gopher Wood gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a chord master, I'd like to summon... Dominicus, the harmonious choir. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. <laughs> I see. Then, I would summon the harmonious choir too. Don't you... Have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that it includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. Then let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes come true through the power of the harmonious choir. It's a deal then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you will have to become a star first. Okay, back to me. It's the sound of the first. Oh God! Back sooner than I thought. Any results? Uh, yeah. Oh, <gasps> with my wife. I'm gonna take the holy hands. Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish. My final mission is complete, but pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. The path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude, staking everything on some nameless in the future? But you have the numbers, and in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Oh, God, any more encouraging words? As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals and won't grant us an upper hand. Panacone is our rival's home turf, 
and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the families got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most. And since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it... Even if we succeed, it's too risky. Hmm. So, no one's gonna say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. I know the answer to this question. Hmm. Uh... Okay. Uh, looks like we have one more ice of our sleeves. Time for the mess master stroke. General of the law, foo. So I heard that before the charm <laughs> yeah. festival begins, there will be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the Soul Glad TM Festivity Audition. <laughs> or <laughs> you the silence. It's going to be held in the moment of sports sand. Ain't TM silent? As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of festive superstar, and be able to personally bask in the graces of Miss Robin. Uh, not that that's important. Hey, 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 hold up. Crucial is that we can enter the Grand Theater before the audience arrives. Unless she wants to touch her. Oh, boy. So, how do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. Uh, to tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along. But now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. So they're still running this. Not even a hun. Not even a hugger. It was originally just a publicity stunt, set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. But it looks like it might be worth a shot. We'll follow March's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? I don't think so. I'm afraid I won't have the time. As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. Yes! I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now everyone, let's prepare to move out. <gasps> I get to sleep with Firefly, yay! I was with, oh, come on, can I end this episode already? This is where challengers thrive and dream chasers shine, all under the watchful eye of the entire universe. If you have ambition, what? and the drive to your friend, the next superstar of Penacone's Charmony Festival could be you! Oh, wow, they've really outdone themselves! Oh, I'm starting to get excited! Is that dubstep? Oh, it is! Oh my god, what is this music? Uh, is he talking about us? Mm. Excuse me, you four. What are you hoping to get out of all this? As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by banners, you vie for the crown. The sword and rose! Protect the beauty. The beauty. Ain't you the kid I got drunk? Magnificent and majestic. 
A knight's head is hard as steel. Brotherland's focus is stubborn as a heel. We don't all have to be winners. But if we don't have fun, <laughs> we'd all be sinners. People are pouring in. It kind of feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. Let's get in there quickly and enter the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way. Make way. Huh? Yeah, no TM. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soul Glad's factory. Why look familiar? Why well, could be mistaken? My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Mm, hello, everybody. I'm Himiko, a nameless from the Astral Express, and these are my companions. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? I can't hide it anyways. Pentaconi is plastered with our posters. And because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make any rash moves. Hmm. Uh, hold on. Is it if I land Lily checks out? Hey, when I'm the Glancy Blaster and she's. <laughs> <laughs> what is funny? What am I gonna pick? I'm picking number two, because why not? Hello, I'm the Glancy Blaster Ball and she's Shay Cheese. Why not? Uh, hello everyone! I'm March 7th! I'm an ordinary girl who loves adventures! Hello everyone! I'm Firefly! Mm, I am also an ordinary girl who enjoys adventures! No, she's my bitch! So you back off, audience! So it's a bunch of nameless guests! This final face-off is bound to be spectacular! Time is precious! My four friends, come with me! I'm not getting drunk. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm gonna do. Last subscribe, I'll see you later. Sayonara.